calm is as strong as a spell I'll never tell Hi guys, welcome back to Exmo Lex. Today I'll be continuing the series where we examine the LDS Church through the lens of the Bite model of authoritarian control, looking at each point individually to help us determine whether or not the LDS Church is a cult. Unlike other videos I've done in the past where I talk about the Bite model, this series is very, very in-depth. Watching one video in this series and using it to determine whether or not the church is a cult is simply not enough. Each video is only one point on the bite model, and the bite model has dozens of points. I'll leave more links about it in the description, as well as links to more condensed versions of this. And as always, I'll be using sources directly from the church through its literature, its profits, its website, etc. Today we'll be examining a point under behavior control, the B in bite model restrict leisure, entertainment, and vacation time. If you had asked me as a Mormon if the church did this, my answer would have been a resounding no, of course not. But since leaving the church, I can be a bit more objective and tell you that yes, the LDS church absolutely does this. Let's just start with the Mormon version of keeping the Sabbath day holy. Here's what it says in the Standards for Youth, which is basically a collection of church expectations that has been prepared for young people. Prepare during the week so that you can reserve Sunday for the many uplifting activities that are appropriate for the Sabbath day. Such activities include spending quiet time with your family, studying the gospel, fulfilling your church callings and responsibilities, serving others, writing letters, writing in your journal, and doing family history work. Fun! Sunday is not a day for shopping, recreation, or athletic events. Do not seek entertainment or make purchases on this day. And it also says honoring the Sabbath day includes attending all your church meetings. I grew up in a pretty average Utah Mormon household. And our Sunday do's and don'ts were also pretty average. On Sundays, we don't buy anything. No going out to eat, no buying groceries, no going to the movies, no going to friends' houses, no swimming, no working. You would be shamed pretty fiercely for working on a Sunday. Some Mormon households were more strict and would also say you can't watch TV or play video games or things like that. As you can imagine, Sundays are typically pretty boring for Mormon youth if their families follow all the church's standards. Like what kind of a rule is, quote, do not seek entertainment? Here are a few more examples that the Mormon prophet Ezra Taft Benson gave of things that you should not do on Sundays. Doing gardening and odd jobs around the house, taking trips to canyons or resorts, visiting friends socially, joyriding, wasting time, and engaging in other amusements, playing vigorously and going to movies, reading material that does not contribute to your spiritual uplift, shopping or supporting with your patronage businesses that operate on Sunday, such as grocery stores, supermarkets, restaurants, and service stations. So basically one seventh of your entire life is dedicated solely to church activities. And doing anything outside of those bounds is looked down upon. For many Mormon families, this also applies to going on vacation. If my family was out of town on a Sunday, we would attend church wherever we were at the time. The church has encouraged this too. I will leave links in the description to a couple different articles the church has published about it. Let's also talk about these other points, restricting leisure and entertainment. I can't even tell you how selective I was about entertainment when I was a Mormon. I tried really hard to follow exactly what the prophets had taught about it. Prophet Ezra Taft Benson specifically told members not to see R-rated movies as far back as 1986 when he said this during general conference. Don't see R-rated movies or vulgar videos or participate in any entertainment that is immoral, suggestive, or pornographic. Don't listen to music that is degrading. This was then repeated specifically over a decade later when Elder Cree L. Cawford of the Quorum of the Seventy said, What difference does it make why it is rated R? The fact is, a prophet of God has said not to go to R-rated movies. That ought to be an enough. That's a very because I said so argument. Personally, I'm not a big fan of blindly following authority like that. The church's standards for youth gets even more in depth about appropriate media. Select only media that uplifts you. Satan uses media to deceive you by making what is wrong and evil look normal, humorous, or exciting. He tries to mislead you into thinking that breaking God's commandments is acceptable and has no negative consequences for you or others. Do not attend, view, or participate in anything that is vulgar, immoral, violent, or pornographic in any way. Do not participate in anything that presents immorality or violence as acceptable. Mormon standards for entertainment are so high that to be perfectly honest, most Mormons don't even follow them. I did, and I would say that my more old-fashioned Mormon friends and family did, but out of all the Mormons I know, I would say probably 85 to 90 percent of them don't follow all of these guidelines. They are, after all, very strict. 
One of the reasons that I followed so closely is because I've always had this sort of perfectionist attitude about life, even when I was a kid. And when the prophet and apostles would get up during general conference and say these sorts of things, I felt a lot of guilt and shame if I wasn't following the prophet. Now, watching R-rated movies isn't going to keep a Mormon out of the temple unless they have a very strict bishop. So I wouldn't say that this one is a requirement the same way I would call garments or paying tithing a requirement. But is it still expected? Is it still talked about over the pulpit? Is there shame surrounding appropriate media? Yes, absolutely. As I hope I've clearly demonstrated, the LDS Church absolutely does restrict leisure, entertainment, and vacation time. Does this one point make it a cult? No. But, as we are seeing with this growing list of things that the church lines up on that are on the bite model, this certainly doesn't help its case. If you haven't already, be sure to check out the other videos I've done on this subject. This video will be added to a growing playlist and I will put that link in the description. Thank you guys so much for watching. An extra special thank you to my patrons for supporting the channel. You guys rock. And the biggest of thank yous goes to Craig Call, Doug Davis, Megan Haycock, Noble Monster Comics, Richard Kaner, Tans, and the Exmo Candle Company for supporting at the Demon Tier on my Patreon. Couldn't do it without you. Thank you so much. If you guys would like to support the channel and the work that goes into it, there are links to do so in the description below, as well as links to all my other social media if you want to see more content. As always, remember to like, comment, subscribe, and share because all of those things help out the channel a lot. Thank you again for being here, and I'll see you next time. Bye!